Hi guys, me again. Okay, so this is part three. We just left off with the young slave boy from Van Tassel delivering his message. Um, so now the situation in the classroom has changed dramatically. We are now on um, uh, page 15, but now we're at lines six through 12. Um, how has the schoolroom changed? Um, after Ichabod Crane has given his message. How do the students act? Um, does this particular behavior still happen in school? Think, you know, when the teacher is preoccupied, maybe there's a visitor at the door, uh, the classroom door, or even when there's a substitute teacher, uh, does this behavior actually go on? You know it does. Um, there are several words in these lines that you should define. Uh, trifles, nimble, impunity, imps, yelping, racketing, and this is in quotation marks, the green, and emancipation. And that was listed in order. Um, please remember that when you define words, you um, need to make sure that the definition works in context. As we have seen repeatedly, whenever we do this together, sometimes you have to look at the third, the fourth, even the fifth definition of a word um, to find the one that makes sense in context. So it is your responsibility to make sure that the definition you've come up with makes sense in context. Okay, so once we get beyond um, the, the young kids in the schoolroom, we now have Knickerbocker describing how Ichabod um, goes about, um, this is line 13, goes about his toilet. Okay, again, <laughs> look up the word. Um, it is not the first definition, obviously. This has nothing to do with the toilet in your home, but there is actually another definition that makes sense here. Um, uh, how does a Knickerbocker, if you take a look at these lines, lines 13 through 15, how does Knickerbocker continue his mocking of Ichabod Crane? Okay, he just makes fun of Ichabod Crane right and left, and he enjoys it. So here's another opportunity for Knickerbocker to make fun of our hero, <laughs> Ichabod Crane. If you go forward, um, Ichabod Crane um, has to obviously have a mode of transportation to get to the Van Tassel farm. And so um, Knickerbocker, again, makes fun of the mode of transportation uh, Ichabod Crane uses, not so much in the fact that it is a horse, but he makes fun of the type of horse that Ichabod Crane then um, gets or borrows um, to go to the Van Tassel farm. So you need to make sure you understand why. Um, if you go to um, line 19, I mean, the, the sarcasm almost drips off the page. Like he's really having a good time with this. And this would be, of course, Knickerbocker. So um, if you go to lines 20 on page uh, 15, through line two on page 16, this is the description of the horse. And let me just tell you, I'm going to back up a little in my in my scrolling because that's the beginning of the section. But uh, page 15, line 20 through page 16, line two, this description is another example of why Washington Irving is a phenomenal writer. Um We've seen this before in his descriptions of Brom Bones, in his description of Katrina Van Tassel, and in his description of Ichabod Crane. Washington Irving basically paints a picture with words. So um, you definitely have to work through this definition and tell me what kind of horse is this? The horse's name is Gunpowder. Um, and make sure that you, you have a very clear idea of what kind of horse Ichabod Crane has. Um, a very, very clear idea. Okay, if we move forward, um, now we are on page 16, lines three through eight. And uh, again, Knickerbocker has fun at Ichabod Crane's expense. Um, he just continues his onslaught. He talks about the fact that Ichabod Crane is a suitable figure for such a steed. And then he goes on to describe what Ichabod Crane looks like when he's on the back of this particular horse. 
Uh, again, this is just Knickerbocker at his finest, having fun of Ichabod Crane. So you do need to know what um, Ichabod Crane looks like on the back of this horse. So um, as line um, nine approaches um, through line 11, Knickerbocker says something really, really important. He says that um, Ichabod Crane um, on Gunpowder's back is an apparition as is seldom to be met with in broad daylight. Now, this line is significant on a multitude of levels, but you definitely need to A, figure out what is Knickerbocker saying, um, and B, even though he is joking and mocking and sarcastic, he's actually telling us something symbolically. He's foreshadowing something about Ichabod Crane. And this should be something we already know as readers because we figured this out long ago when we very, very first were introduced to Ichabod Crane. Um... Now, if you move forward then into lines 12 through 18, again, you get description. And I know you guys are all very fond of description. That's sarcasm. Um, your job here is to look up unfamiliar terms. Now, remember, the definition that works contextually may not be the first definition you come across. So for lines 12 through 18, you're looking at the description. You're looking at what symbolically could be in this beautiful description. Again, what time of year is it? What's happening to the plants? Why is that significant? What are the birds and the squirrels doing? Again, what is the symbolic significance of this particular description? As you move forward, okay, um, lines 19 through 27, again, you get Washington Irving and his birds. Okay, the birds here are doing something in particular. Why? What are they doing? It's significant. And if you remember, okay, Irving, the author, has used birds before. Okay, if you go back um, to page nine, Okay, so if you, you, you know, pause for a minute, go back to page nine, see what the birds were used for symbolically previously in the text, and then come back here and see if you see the link. There is a link between what the birds were used for symbolically previously in the text on page nine and what they're being used for here. Um, again, lots of unfamiliar terms. Uh, you might need to look them up to make sure you understand what the birds are doing. And then you can relate it to the meaning in the text. Okay? All right. So then if you move forward, again, we're going to get a lot of description here. Top of page um, 17, lines 1 through 11, you see Ichabod Crane jogging along. Love that. Um, on his way to the Van Tassel farm, and he's appreciating the countryside. He's appreciating the farmland that he's riding through. You see um, that the word treasures is used early on in this description. That's important. Think again about Ichabod Crane. How does he view the farmland? Okay, and then if you look at the description itself, the rest of the description, a color scheme shows up. There's a, a color or a, a hue uh, that seems to be repeated again and again and again. Okay, why? Why that color? Why? How does that relate to this idea of treasures? When Ichabod Crane looks at the farmland, what does he in fact see? And as this Big paragraph of description winds up. It is mentioned that all of this stuff is served, that's important, to him by the delicate little dimpled hand of Katrina Van Tassel. That is so important. Why? What is Katrina Van Tassel to Ichabod Crane? It is so important. Okay. Now, if you move forward, um, and no, actually, I'm going to stop there. The next uh, recording should be quite brief.